This video is brought to you by Videoblocks. Click the first link in your description below to learn more. So that was fun, wasn't it guys? Are you ready for the most epic episode of Copycat Friday? Well, sure I am. Oh, shut up, you're losing your chin. It's Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday, the weekly series where we recreate an amazing filmmaking technique. Now we got an email from one of you guys asking how the music video Emperor's New Clothes from Panic at the Disco was shot. The video clip has a very hard and strong look and it even seems like a stop motion technique but we'll dive into those details a little bit later. Now we wanted to do this one good and try to have most of the details right so we took care of everything. And that starts with building the set. So while Ellen here is doing the body painting on me, I want to thank not only her but also Videoblocks who are supporting us today. Videoblocks is a huge library where you can find visual effects, motion templates, stock footage and so much more. We've actually been using their servers for more than a year and they have helped us on so many projects. So make sure to check it out guys, you can actually start a 7 day trial by following the first link in the description below. The set design itself was a simple plastic on the floor on which we distributed a layer of sand. The background had to be dark, so we hang up some black sheets. You can also find yourself a nice location in the woods, but if you can do this in a studio or a garage, you have an easier option to set up the lights, because this is going to be pretty important as well, and here's why. There we have it, the most sketchy setup that we've ever done, but it works, so that is important. Now what we have right here are two LED panels from Aperture, the LS ones, and they are on top of a 2x2 frame. And this frame is going to make sure that the light from those LED panels are being softed. Now because we couldn't attach all the lightings up there because we don't have enough clamps and light stands, etc., I actually placed a uh, 120D also from Aperture here on the side, and that is bouncing its lights into the frame here and then bouncing back on me. Now that is because I also needed some lights here a little bit on my face on the front. Now in the second part of the video clip, we'll actually move that aperture 120D to my back. That way I have a strong backlight, which you also see in the Panic at the Disco video clip. But that will also make sure that I have more of a darker front. So what I'll do for that is add a reflector in front of me and that way the backlight is being reflected into that reflector bouncing back on me. So that's it for the general lighting setup. Finally, we have some special effects lights which are these two Stella lights up there which is going to make sure that we have some thunder. And the cool thing about these Stella lights is that we can control them through a remote so that way I can just fastly press this button right here kind of mimicking lightning effect which is pretty cool. And you also have attached a CDB filter in front of these lights so that we have more of a color contrast between the general lighting and the back lighting or that thunder. Also thunder is more bluish. So that's it! Now during the entire music video there is this fog, so we used a simple smoke machine for that. On a certain moment we needed to have a layer of smoke close to the ground. And here we cooled down the smoke with some ice through a tube. And by the way, if you want to see some more creative tips with a smoke machine, then make sure to follow the link in your description below. In the second shot, you have a backlight standing behind the demon. In between, you have a thick pack of smoke. To create this effect, you have to blow the smoke from the same position as the backlight. Then, film right away so you maintain that thick, heavy smoke. Everything is set up and now we are ready to shoot. And we actually hired Ellen, who is going to do the makeup for me. Brendan, the artist that you see in the official music video, changes from a normal person to a devil. So you want to start with a little makeup. Make a few shots, then add some horns again, make a few shots, perhaps make the horns bigger, etc. And that way it seems like you're changing more and more into another character. I'm feeling horny today. Now let's have a look at the camera work. Stop motion is a technique where you take a picture of a still object, then you move that object, take another picture of it and so on. And that way it seems like that still object is moving, but you will still notice a weird artificial look to the movement. And it's that same kind of look that you see in that clip as well. But it wasn't shot the same way. They probably went for a very fast shutter speed. So we set our camera to 1 500th of a second, which decreases the motion blur and thus creates that hard look. And since such a fast shutter speed makes her scene pretty dark, it was important that we got strong lights. So the shutter speed is one element to get that specific look. 
The other one is the actual speed, and you can get that fast speed by just dancing and moving the camera fast, but it's going to be pretty hard to get everything in focus or just have the correct framing at all time. So what we did was played back the song at half the speed, and thus we could do the dancing and the lip syncing also at half the speed. But make sure that your dance movements are still kind of looking robotic. But we had planned to dance and camera movements up front, so that way we knew exactly what we had to do and Jenik was able to pull his focus right on spot. Now in post-production we then speed up the clip to bring it back to that fast moving look. And then the final ingredient to get that hard look is the color grading. Now we are using Premiere Pro's Lumetri and what you can basically do is start with lowering your white balance if you haven't already done that in camera. Next we want to create deep blacks so that the background is not going to be visible anymore. The brighter parts should stand out which again helps to get that hard look. So I'm increasing the whites, which are the absolute brightest areas. And to have it in contrast with the rest, I'm actually going to lower the highlights. And as you're doing this, you might also want to decrease the exposure. And finally, the colors. You can already start with decreasing the saturation a bunch. And then we're going to head off to the color wheels. Here we are going to add some blue or teal into the shadows to make them appear deeper. The skin tones lay in the mid-tones and what we'll do here is introduce a little bit of green. And that way the skin tones look very pale and dead, which is exactly what we want. And because we are pushing green into the shot, it might affect also the highlights. So to fix that, we'll compensate by adding a little bit of the opposite magenta. And again, another exciting copycat project is finished. Now lean back and enjoy the results. Guys, I hope you like the effect. I'm going home now, Jordi is in the shower, but most of all, I want to thank everybody who helped on this project, especially Ellen. Hey! She did an awesome job on the makeup, but guys, you know what I'm going to say, stay creative. So this one is going to be funny, the first time that I'm going to wear lenses. Here we go. Very to it. No, don't. Nee, toch niet. Oh, draaien, kijk eens. Kijk, 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 kijk. Oh!